Hi all the angels have been coaching us to tune into better feeling thoughts for some time. Today, they explain, in many ways, how that practice allows us to access their unceasing stream of love, support and guidance. The more we understand why this works, the more apt we are to do it. I'll share how this practice helped me navigate several challenges with grace and flow this week, and give you pointers on how you can move through lower vibrational thoughts into better ones, so you can enjoy this fast-moving flow on earth rather than feeling overwhelmed by it. Grab a cup of tea or coffee. This is a longer one. Have a blessed and beautiful week, smiley face, and message from the angels my dear friends, we love you so very much. There is so much love flowing to your planet right now. There are beings from many dimensions holding a beautiful focus on a loving future for all of you individually and collectively. Angels are waiting in the wings to nurture and support you. We broadcast only on the frequency of love. We constantly look for ways to guide you to the next loving experience you desire. We remain steadfast in our vision of you having every loving thing and experience you desire. When you waver in your faith, we do not. When you feel unworthy of love, we know your worthiness. When you disconnect from love for even a nanosecond, we continue to love you. We see the love beneath your so-called negative emotions, and we remain focused on this alone. When you worry, we see the love and care beneath your feelings of powerlessness. We focus on what you desire and on your inner power to create. When you feel enraged that someone has treated you unkindly, we focus on your worthiness and your desire to be treated better. When you are upset because someone took something from you, we focus on your power to allow more to flow into your life. When you feel helpless and angry because you believe someone can rob you of your freedom, we focus on the fact that you are eternally free to create with the divine. Dear ones, we cannot and will never focus on or judge your shadows because we live to support your light. We mirror back to you in every way we can, the highest and most beautiful aspects of yourself. Frequently, we see you more kindly and powerfully than you see yourself. When you reach for good feelings, you also tune into our steady stream of love. You open to grace, guidance, and goodness. When you focus on anything that does not feel good although we remain in the highest frequency possible you are not tuned to a different frequency. We never stop sending love. However, you can, and often do, stop receiving. Think of it this way. We are broadcasting on a frequency of love in much the same way a radio broadcasts on a particular FM frequency. We are sending signals to encourage and guide you to all you desire. Whether you want a home, a relationship, better finances, a new outfit, or a new direction, Heaven's broadcast is always on, and always trying to assist you. We never broadcast fear, doubt, worry, upset, or other lower vibrations. We never send you to situations or people that match these lower vibrations. We broadcast only a steady stream of love, on a frequency of love. Our channel never changes. Whenever you focus on anything that makes you feel good, soothed, or even a little better, you start to tune into our loving broadcast. You are closer and closer to the loving frequency of our channel. You begin to receive our signals more clearly. You feel our love more intensely. Best of all, you start to feel and see yourselves the way we see powerful, perfect, worthy. So when you enjoy the aroma of your morning coffee, you tune into our loving broadcast and might suddenly remember you have to run an important errand. When you worry about getting to work in time, you are not tuned into our broadcast. You might miss our guidance to check the traffic. When someone smiles at you, and you feel good, you suddenly feel your heart attuned to the goodness in people and, in that moment, are attracting all good relationships. When someone cuts you off in traffic, and you scowl at their rudeness, you tune our love out and open to the other rude people on earth at that moment. Your vibration is influenced by the outside world, but only to the degree you allow. Suppose, using the analogy above, 
you started to worry about getting to work on time and realized the worrisome thought didn't feel good. You remind yourself that the universe has your back, that even if you are a little late, all will be well, and that it is better to relax than get worked up about something over which you have no control. You take a deep breath, and feel better. Suddenly, you feel the urge to check traffic, take a different route than usual, and arrive on time. Likewise, when that driver cuts you off in traffic, you might react momentarily but then quickly go back to listening to your music or audiobook. In that case, you have not tuned into rudeness long enough to attract more from the world. You have returned to the broadcast of love. Your day will flow more smoothly. Dear ones, as we have said so very often, you get to choose your tuning. We have already chosen ours, and it is love and only love. You, too, can practice soothing yourself, distracting yourself from unpleasant thoughts, and relaxing into the arms of a loving universe that wants you to have all that you desire. Your world is going through growing pains, but you need not. You can tune into our heavenly broadcast whenever you reach for a better feeling. We are here for you, now and always, steadfast in our focus on your beautiful hearts, your beautiful light, and the path to all you desire. God bless you. We love you so very much. The Angel's Message from Anne Hi everyone, Monday, in the middle of office work, I had a random impulse to call the long guys. Sprinklers needed fixing, and my front tree was overdue for a trim. Coincidentally, they were available and showed up at my house within minutes. I walked out to see a gentleman standing on a six-inch limb with huge trimmers, artfully sculpting the branches. This man, who usually mows lawns told his boss that very day that he knew he could do a great job trimming trees. I was his first client, and as a result, I have a gorgeous and happy tree in my front yard. The goodness didn't stop there. Bulk trash just happened to come the next day and hauled away the giant pile of branches. Of course, the synchronicities were not coincidence. They were the result of pruning my negative thoughts and keeping attuned to the constant heavenly broadcast of love and guidance. It has been a week of trimming, both external and internal. After a long, hot summer, I cut my garden back, and my dear generous eggplant, who struggled through the heat, sprouted new fruits within days. New peppers are growing, and I will soon have to make my yearly supply of pesto, mm. The roses are blooming once again, and the birds delight me every morning, flitting about the sunflowers that a storm bent over, so the blossoms sit just perfectly outside my kitchen window. Cutting away the old dead branches allows the life force to flow to the healthy ones. Whether blocked or not, life always wants to expand, grow, give, and share. Our lives are part of nature, too. As we trim away the thoughts that don't serve our growth and evolution, the life force flows lovingly toward our healthy, happy desires and bears fruit in our own future. The practice of focusing on better feeling thoughts is one of pruning the dead branches from our minds. We weed out thoughts that choke off love's ability to flow and grow in our lives and nourish ones that do. The practice of reaching for better feelings and attuning to love is infinitely practical. This week, my mail email address was not sending, my internet went down before a full day of Zoom clients, a friend had severe health challenges and a family member had a life-threatening condition that flared up. I am working full-time, and still enjoying a steep learning curve for my new ETSE shop. Instead of reacting, my number one priority has been to prune away the negative thoughts and worries by reaching for good feelings. Keeping my vibe high allowed me to flow through the challenges instead of creating struggle. Before I jumped into action, I sat, breathed, received and reached for good feeling thoughts. This is easy. The universe has my back. It is a beautiful day. As I attune to love, the guidance and support flow into my life gracefully and easily. As a result, I've worked around the email issue and am progressing toward a solution. The modem miraculously started working when I focused myself into a state of pure presence. 
I helped my friend open to her own healing, and my dear one with the health challenges is in a state of wondrous surrender, getting good help, and knowing how deeply they are loved. I've been fully present for clients, and guided to all I need to learn so I could get back to the fun work of designing t-shirts. In the past, any one of these challenges would have upset me and driven me crazy. I would have stalled out on forward progress by spinning around in worry or ineffective action. Now, I see life's challenges as reminders to trim the dead wood of past thinking and refine my focus so I can create better moving forward. Admittedly, reaching for good feelings is easy when life is easy. It is much more difficult when things aren't working, and people you love are hurting. Nonetheless, if you practice often, attuning to love will eventually become habit. The moment I feel unpleasant, I stop and breathe. If I can, I sit and receive the angel's love. If I don't have time for that, I pick the first thing I see and appreciate it until I feel love's flow. It often feels silly, but it works. Guidance is accessible. Challenges get resolved. We become tuning forks for others to open to grace. This is one of the most beautiful things the angels do for us. They can't make us tune into loving feelings or good thoughts. Nonetheless, they hold such a strong vibration of love that if we're willing to breathe and receive or tune into any tiny good feeling on our own, we can easily resonate into their loving vibration where we are open to all manner of good. If we have a single self-loving thought, we can resonate with their vibration of pure, unconditional love for who we truly are. Without the dead wood of old dense energy, the life force and love from the Creator are free to flow in more positive directions in our lives. We become tuning forks for that light, confidence and grace for others, too, as we maintain our own good feeling vibration. So, if you want to help the world, keep the world within you in the best feeling space possible. Pray for the world. Imagine a world at peace clean, harmonious, and beautiful. Then be patient as you look for this good in small ways. Focus on the kind people, the ones starting companies to clean up carbon emissions and get the junk out of the oceans. Obsess about the people who don't see race, creed, or color and treat each other as beautiful humans. Look at the creativity, kindness, and love that is offered if you're willing to look. As we collectively focus on goodness, we enjoy and empower it, in our own lives and in the world. Here are a few ways to help you trim the dead wood of old thinking and align with love, life, grace, guidance, and ease. 1. Be kind to yourself First don't beat yourself up when you can't reach a good mental space. Just go for a little better feeling. You can appreciate the sunlight or the rain. You can enjoy a piece of chocolate or a crunchy little cucumber my favorite end of summer snack. You can cozy up under a soft blanket or read a few sentences from an inspiring book. These many movements towards love count. They are moments of grace. They allow love to flow into our hearts and lives. Each builds on the next. As we look for the good, we find it more often. We contribute to the greater good. Too when you feel stuck in worry, distract we do not have to make ourselves feel good about everything in this moment. Sometimes we can't. Sometimes the breakup is too fresh or too emotionally charged. Sometimes the financial worries are too great. Sometimes a news story haunts you. We can't make ourselves feel good about something that does not, any more than we can enjoy the taste of bad food. It isn't always worth trying. Instead, distract. Find something better to focus on. It may not make human sense, but vibrationally, it is sound wisdom. Years ago, I was worked up over a problem when the angels strongly suggested I get a pedicure. I thought they were nuts. What good would that do? Later, I understood. Once nurtured, relaxed, and peaceful, I was open to guidance. Solutions flowed. I let go of the problem and therefore, became open to the solution. You might have a very serious challenge in your life, but if you pay attention, you realize you feel like napping, cleaning out a drawer, taking a walk, 
or grabbing a cup of coffee. You are being guided to focus on something that feels better so you vibrate closer to the eternal broadcast of love. You are being guided into a space where you will be open to receive the help that is contenty flowing. 3. When you're upset, own it, move through it, and go past it when you're angry or upset, a force of nature is trying to propel you beyond an unpleasant situation. The first step to releasing it is to let it move through you in a healthy way. Acknowledge it. Share it with your angels while they burn it off in the light of love. Rant in a journal or vent out loud in private. Walk swiftly or vacuum vehemently. Then, start to design your future. How do you want to be treated moving forward? Will you listen to your own heart more? Speak up or move on if something isn't working. Shift your attitude toward more compassion. Once you empower yourself, the anger will dissipate into the light of love. As you burn off the steam with self-acceptance and self-love, you can harness the raw power of the energy moving through you to move toward what you do desire. Don't judge your upsets. The universe doesn't. Just move through them into your deeper desires for a better, kinder, and easier life. For look for the good the glass is truly half full or half empty, depending on how you look at things. Life is either a beach or a bee, number ch. There are wonderful people and nasty lost souls. They're all out there. We get to sift and sort through reality and focus on what we want to experience. I remember watching two bears at a wildlife center get their layered lunch bucket salads. In the bucket were layers of bear food, berries, nuts, treats, fruit, veggies, greens, etc. One bear was a very compliant and neat little girl. She daintily picked through everything in the proper order, eating layer by layer. The other one sat firmly on the ground, spread her big back legs, and dumped the entire contents of the bucket between them. She then proceeded to pick through the tossed salad and eat only her favorite foods. While it is good practice to accept what is right in front of us, like bear number one, the angels urge us to pick through our thoughts as if we were bear number two. Look at life as your bucket, dump it all out in front of you, and then sift and sort to find what you enjoy and want to focus upon. Next time you're in a crowd, think of it like that dumped bucket salad and look for what you like. We live in wild, wonderful, and wacky times. Wild because there is a fast-moving flow. Wonderful because even despite the bumps and apparent insanity, we are no longer complacent, and we are growing. It's wacky because while there is a calling for love, there is still a great deal of moment-to-moment -moment resistance to feeling good. It is going to be bumpy for a while, but the more you tune into the peaceful, calm, loving vibration of spirit, simply by looking for things in the bucket to feel good about, the more you rise above the chaos and open to the love and support that always flow in the higher frequencies. Have a blessed week, love, Anne.